afternoon, welcome back in the EU Deal after Brexit show. My name is Camille Magnus Ali and I have the pleasure of welcoming Matthias Leit, student in international and European law and expert on the workers' rights legislation post Brexit. How are you? I'm great, and you? I'm fine. So, Matthias Leit, can you explain me why this it is a huge topic today, the workers' rights legislation? Well, since the departure of the United Kingdom from the European Union, uh, the European Union's law won't apply anymore in, to the UK. So there are main, several important uh, employment law standards that were in the Acti Communautaire of the European Union, mm -hmm. such as, for instance, Article 153 from the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, which uh, imposes some minimum standards in employment law that the member states have to respect. So from now on, the UK government will be able to amend, appeal or revoke those standards. What kind of minimum standards? For instance, we can have uh, the right to weekend or the paid holidays. Okay. And is there a provision to protect such minimum standards? Well, the European Union passed with the United Kingdom the Trade and Cooperation Agreement on the 30th December 2020, which includes a non regression clause in which we can find a tariff and quota free deal in which it is written that the UK and the EU cannot modify the employment standards in a manner that affects trade or investment. So, yeah, sorry, sorry <laughs> I hear you. So the Institute for Public Policy Research declared that it will be hard to prove and so the EU will not easily be able to observe if the UK respects this, this provision or not. And what does the TCA contain if the parties do not comply with the minimum standards? Well, the TCA... And the non-migration clause. <laughs> Sorry. The TCA contains, so first, a mechanism with panels of experts will issue non-binding recommendations. And if they are not respected, then there is a possibility to suspend some TCA provisions, such as the reintroduction of tariffs, but they have to respect still the principle of necessity and proportionality. Do you truly believe, Matthias Lake, that the tendency will be toward a lowering of the UK minimum standards? Well, let's go back to the 80s and several conservative governments passed some law that dismantled the labour law in the UK. In 1992, with the Maastricht Treaty, the UK opted out from the social charter. It was adopted only in 1997 with the government of Tony Blair. So the um, social charter um, implied in the UK some important standards such as, so as I said before, the paid holidays or... Important. <laughs> important, yeah. <laughs> the paid holidays or uh, the right to weekend. So in the working time directive, so it was implemented in the UK in the working time regulation. And so the Prime Minister said that the working time directive and the data production regulation are, I quote, not ideally tailored to the need of this economy. So I don't know what will happen in the future, but it seems that the UK is more prone not to have the workers' rights as a priority. But before the Brexit, the UK was born as a member state by the European Court of Justice. What is happening now? Well, um, the European case law will still apply to the UK courts, mm -hmm. but there are some, a list, a closed list of some courts labeled as relevant courts. So they will be able to depart from the UK, no, from the CGU, sorry, law, case law, yeah. if, they, if it appears right for them to do so. So, for instance, we have uh, the Scottish High Court, which can do such a thing. And so, even though the Employment Appeal Tribunal is not really labeled as such, the UK will be able to implement some label law, which will overturn the CGU decisions. And so, at the end, it will be hard to prove the trade investment impact. So the EU won't be able to make any reprisal on the UK. And does the TTA stipulate international obligations for the workers? Yes, of course. It stipulates the European Convention on Human Rights that have to be respected by the UK, mm -hmm. but also the work alongside the International Labour Organization. And also the Declaration on Fundamental, princi uh, fundamental Principle, of course, and rights at work. <laughs> So the UK, for instance, has to promote and protect the social dialogue between employees and employers. And there is an absence of strict enforcement. So, of course, it can be also questioned. The time of this show is fading away. Might just late. Um, if you have to give me one word to resume the workers' rights legislation post-Brexit. Well, I would like to Or say, the situation. Well, I would like to take a quote from uh, the Prime Minister, if you want. Great choice. Thank you. <laughs> so the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, 
said, I quote, the UK wants immediately send children up chimneys or pour raw sewage all over its beaches. We're not going to grass and you'd expect that. One word triggers me, the word immediately. And this immediately. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and this word subject that the labor law will from now on be subject to the multiple political agendas of the following governments. Thank you, Camille, for having me. Thank you for bringing us your expertise on such a huge topic. It's the end of this show, the EU deal after Brexit. Do not hesitate to comment and to find other episodes on our channel. Thank you for following us. Have a great day.